Hi guys, Ross here and welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're gonna be going over this product render scene, which I did for CC, I think about a year ago now, and it's still one of my favorite product renders I've done. So I'm super excited to share this with you today. And we're gonna be going over the lighting portion of this project. So we're gonna dive into how I set the lights up, why I set them up that way, and just how that all comes together to create the final project. Really excited to dive into this. This is a snippet from Patreon. So if you then want to learn more about the scene in terms of modeling, texturing, and the post-production to give it the final grade, then you can check that over on Patreon. But the lighting has lots packed into it, so I'm gonna stop waffling and let you guys get straight into it. Okay, enjoy the video, peace. Okay, so we're in Cinema 4D and this is the general scene setup. You can see we have the render over on the left hand side and actually it's not too far from the final version, the post-production version, which is good because it means we didn't really have to do too much after the fact, uh, which is usually how I like to work. I like to try to get it as close as possible in cinema as I can and then that just reduces the need to do too much post-production. On this occasion, the client actually did the post-production but they were kind enough to share with me their process so that we can rebuild it in this video. And like I said, there isn't really too much to it so it should be pretty simple for us to set it up but before we dive into that let's actually look at the cinema file and we'll go over the lighting some of the modeling and also the texturing before we dive into post-production first thing we'll do is let's dive out the camera and i'll show you guys what's going on here you can see it's pretty simple there's nothing exciting going on outside of the camera we have this floor here which i believe was to actually add some additional bounce lighting in an earlier version where the reflections were slightly different, but now I'm looking at it, it doesn't really add too much, I don't believe. It looks pretty much the same, but but I usually like to add a floor even if it's not seen because it does help to bounce more light around even if it is super subtle. And maybe it's something that shows up a bit more in the final render. So we have the floor, which is outside of the camera, which is just helping to add a little bit of bounce lighting. We then have the wall, which is obviously acting as our backdrop. Then we just have these cubes, these plinths, which the objects are standing on. And these literally are just cube objects with a small fillet on them, which is gonna give us that lovely kind of light on the corner of these plinths, which is quite a nice detail to have. Any object in real life has some sort of bevel to it, even if it is supposed to be really sharp, it will still have quite a subtle bevel and that is just gonna help to pick up on those nice corners and catch some more of the light. So that's the kind of general setup in terms of the composition. And I wanna start off with the lighting and then we'll dive into the modeling and the texturing. So you'll see straight away, it's, it's pretty simple. We have two area lights and a dome light. So let's go through each of these one by one. We have wall light, which if I zoom out, here we go. It's just lighting up the backdrop. So if I go to the light, you can see it's set to include just the wall. And this is actually kind of from below pointing upwards. And what that does is it gives us this lovely kind of gradient where it's slightly brighter at the bottom and then fades to kind of a darker shade at the top. You can see if I was to like rotate this, how that would affect that gradient. And you can actually get some really nice kind of stylized looks by adjusting this and kind of playing with the rotation and also how close it is to the wall. You'll notice as I move it further away, it's gonna soften that gradient. And as I move it closer, it's gonna become a lot harsher and you don't get as much of a feather. So that's something to keep in mind when you are positioning lights is the actual distance from the surface that it's hitting and um, does play quite a big part in the overall look and feel. Like I said, I'm just gonna undo all of that. And yeah, it's kind of slightly down, pointing up, giving us a lovely gradient. That helps to add a little bit of depth because not only is it adding a shift in color in the background, but it's also helping to add a little bit of color variation in the liquid because you'll notice even though we don't have any other lights enabled, we still have the light from the backdrop shining through on the liquid. Because we do have a subtle gradient, we get some kind of difference in the liquid and in the glass, particularly in this object here. You can see how the glass goes from a lighter shade here to slightly darker in the middle. Same with here and this object here, you see some sort of like variation in the glass. Whereas if this was just a solid color in the background, the glass and the liquid would be a lot flatter um, which obviously we don't want. We want it to have a bit more detail in it and to feel a bit more realistic. That's the first light. And I'm actually just gonna rename that background. Uh, we then have this second area light, which if we just enable, you can see is mostly just giving us some reflections on the right hand side. And if I go into details, you can see I've actually changed the reflection to 0.5. And the reason for this is because 
I liked the brightness of it in terms of the diffuse, but I thought the reflection was a bit strong. So what I did was I just dropped the reflection down to 0.5 and that way I get a nice diffuse level and a nice level of reflection that isn't too overexposed or too distracting. Let's have a look. I don't think I changed any other settings. We have this gradient uh, HDR in from Grayscale Gorilla, I believe. Then the intensity is 10 and the exposure is minus one. You can see if I move this around, how it gives us different looks. And also what I was trying to be conscious of as well, is that I didn't really want it to illuminate the plinths too much because I was hoping to do that with the HDRI, which is the, the final light in this scene. Obviously I kind of, I fiddled with this light quite a lot. As you can tell, if I like move it around, you get completely different looks. Again, even with the plinth in the background, if I move it too far to the right, it starts to illuminate that. When I am placing my lights and moving them around, I'm being super cautious of what objects it's illuminating and what reflections it's causing, because these are all the little details that add up to, to make the final image. So there was a lot of back and forth with this. Obviously, it's easy for me to just show you like this is where the light is placed, but really um, it's going to be a lot of trial and error and kind of playing with different angles until you get something which you're happy with. And like I said, in this case, I was trying to be aware of not illuminating the plinths too much and also just giving us some nice directional lighting. So you can see that it's really only hitting the right hand side of most of these objects, like the bottles are staying in the shade on the left hand side. Um, we're only really getting reflections on the right hand side and that is something that I was trying to be aware of and be conscious of because then when I enable the final HDRI this is as you can tell doing a lot of the heavy lifting and this is actually hitting from the left hand side so if I disabled the other two lights you can see that it's really only focusing on the left. Um, it is illuminating obviously the whole scene, but you can tell from the highlights on the bottle that the main highlight and main key light in this HDRI is hitting it on the left. Uh, same with like the reflections we're getting on these glass objects and liquid and, and the plinths as well. What I was trying to do with the area light, which we were just discussing, is adding that secondary reflection on the right hand side. You can see now it's super subtle because we have the main key light enabled. You can see kind of the difference in the right hand side of these objects here, how it just adds that kind of secondary reflection just on the edge, which is going to help to shape those objects and add more depth and also just make them stand out a bit more against the backdrop. So when we combine all these lights, this is the result we get. And also I will just show you the HDRI. I believe it's a classic Maxim Ros HDRI. Yes, it is. It's the bathroom one, which is my go to HDR. Um, just works, works every time. It's intensity of one, exposure of one, saturation of 10, because I didn't want it to tint the image too much. You can see if I set it to 100, I think it's got quite a warm tone to it. So yeah, I just turned that down a little bit. Everything else is the same. And again, just like I did with the light, I played with a bunch of different rotations, bunch of different um, HDRs until I settled on this one. And yeah, I thought this gave me quite a nice look because we get some nice reflections on the left-hand side of the plinths. Uh, especially with the roughness texture that we've plugged in. Yeah, it just illuminates everything really well. And it's quite an evenly lit scene as well, which is nice. And that allows us to kind of push and pull the highlights and shadows if we need to. So that is it. Those are the three lights. We have the, the two area lights, one which is kind of acting as a fill reflection for the right hand side one for the background and then the HDRI for the main lighting of the scene. And this is how I tend to light a lot of my studio scenes is through HDRs mixed with a couple area lights because the HDRI is going to give you those really nice interesting reflections which for a scene like this where there's a lot of glass you really want to have those details especially here you can see that you're getting the nice kind of window lighting coming through additional details on the glass whereas you wouldn't really get that with an area light it's going to feel a lot more studio like where it's like maybe you'll get like a grade like a gradient light, but you're not gonna get all those nice kind of details of an interior, which you get with a HDRI. So I usually like to use that for my key light and then use area lights to kind of just add in additional details here and there. Something that really kind of shifted my mindset when it came to building scenes is imagining the area lights as like painting light into your scene. So it's like where you feel like there's a bit of light missing, you just like drop in area light in that direction and paint a bit more light somewhere um, to add a bit more detail. And I think that is a really nice way to approach it, almost as if you're painting the light into the scene. 
So thank you guys for watching this video. Hopefully there were some tools and tricks and techniques in this video, which you can apply to your own work. So like I said at the beginning, this is a snippet from Patreon where we continue and go through the texturing, the modeling, and also the post-production for this scene. So if you want to see how the final scene is graded and how everything else is put together, then you can check that out over on Patreon. Let me know in the comment section down below if you found it useful and what more kind of videos you want to see in the future. Thank you again. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day wherever you are in the world and I will catch you in the next one. Peace.